In my video on external merge sort, I explained the simplest variant of the algorithm. I explained how the merge phases work. I explained how run generation works using quicksort. And an obvious thing we observed was that the size of the initial runs you generate have similar size as the available main memory. Because the algorithm fills up all the available main memory and then runs the main memory sort algorithm and writes out those sorted runs to disk. So this is the same size as the available main memory. A second thing we observed was of course that the number of those runs have an impact on the number of merge levels. So it would be a good idea to reduce the number of those runs. Well obviously this could be done by increasing the available main memory. However if that is not possible what can we do? Well there's an interesting algorithm that allows us to generate runs that are larger than the available main memory. And that sounds fancy or like magic, but it actually works. And this technique is called replacement selection. So in replacement selection, the effect we see is, even though we have only two pages of main memory available for sorting, the runs that we generate are on average four pages long. And that's a very surprising effect. So there's no guarantee on that. That just happens on average. However, it has that effect that the runs get larger. Therefore, you have fewer runs. Therefore, you can expect fewer merge phases. And therefore, the amount of I.O. you spend is reduced. So how does replacement selection work? Let's assume the following input. So we have an input QR. And we process the elements here from left to right. So this 30 here is the first element we are going to look at. I assume that we have space available for four elements in main memory. And I assume that I use two structures, a heap and a list. So at all times, this condition must hold. The number of elements in the heap plus the number of elements in the list must be smaller equal this m. Now at most four elements, be it that I have two in the list, two in the heap, th three in the heap, and one in the list, that's all fine, as long as the sum is smaller equal m. So how would you implement that, such a structure where the heap has some elements and the list has some elements? You use an array, yeah, an array of four elements. Yeah, that's my array. So. However, you dynamically change the fraction of the array that's being used for the heap and that is being used for the list. So at all times, I will implement this in a way that I say, for instance, some k smaller equal m elements, that is the heap, and some m minus k elements, that is the list. And the sum of that, of course, is again m. And with that, you can initialize a single structure of size m, you just call a new array of size m, you just use parts of it as a heap and whatever is left over as a list. With that you can implement this logical structure here. So here on the left you see the output run that is generated. So let's look at the examples. So the first thing the algorithm does is when starting is it fills up the available main memory with elements from R. So we can just read four elements and put them into the heap. So that, that is what is done here. So at this point in time, of course, you bulk load the heap. You don't have to do a tuplewise insert into the heap using a loop. Recall that this bulk loading of the heap doesn't have to be done in O n log n time. That would be the tuplewise insert. Tuplewise insert. You can do this in O n time. This is bulk loading. And that's a separate story. Maybe we look at that in the lab or I give you some pointer for reading maybe for that. So here for four elements it doesn't make a difference anyhow, but for larger heaps of course it makes a difference. So here you should bulk load the heap. So let's establish the heap property. Here we go. So in the algorithm how it works is we always remove the top element from the heap. Let's do that and write it to the output run R prime. That is what happens here. Now there's some space left for the next element. What we do in this situation is we read the next element from input R. There are two situations now we have to differentiate. The first is the element we draw 
is larger than the element we just drawed out. That is what happens here. 25 is larger than 10, which means it is okay to insert this element into the heap. Let's do it. That is what happened here. We inserted 25, we established the heap property and everything is fine. Now we draw element 20 from the heap and write it to the output. Done. So again, we have space left for some element. The next element is 73. We draw it, put it into the heap, establish the heap property. We continue popping the first element. 25 is written to the output. Now we have this output. We have room available for another element. That is 16. So 16 is written to my memory. However, 16 is smaller than 25. It's strictly smaller 25. In this situation, we must not write it to the heap. We must write it to the list. That's very important. That is those two situations. Whenever you draw, this is either greater or equal than the last element, then it's totally fine to write it to the heap. However, this time here, this is smaller, strictly smaller than the last element 25. So we have to put it to the list. Otherwise, we would ruin the sorted sequence we want to have here. It's the same effect as in quicksort, whatever we output here, this has to be a perfectly sorted sequence. And if we wrote 16 now to the heap and draw it again from the heap, the next element to output would be 16. So that would ruin the sort property here. So it's important to write it to the list here. So effectively this means the size of the heap is now decreased to three elements. The size of the list is now one element. And that can be easily implemented with this array trick I explained in the beginning of this video. So next thing to do is remove the top element again, which is 30. Let's write it to the output run R prime. Now again, there is room available for another element. That is 26, which again is strictly smaller than 30. So we have to put it to the list as well. Draw the next element from the heap, 40. Write it here, room available. Draw 33, which is again strictly smaller than 40. So next thing to do is write 73 to the output. Okay, draw the next element, which is 50, again, strictly smaller than 73. So this has to be sent to the list. Now we're in a situation where the heap has a size of zero elements and the list has a size of four elements, m elements. In this situation, we end the output run. So logically, now we consider this as a run. Notice that in this example, we have seven elements in the run, even though in main memory, we had only space available for four elements. So this is already by three elements larger than the space available in main memory. So in this situation, basically, we start all over by bulk loading this list into a heap, just like in the beginning of this example. So basically, we now call everything the heap. We reset the sizes. We say the size of the heap is four, the size of the list is zero. We bulk load the data into the heap again and we start all over and start a new run. So here we start all over. Now we write out 16. So we have to keep track of those boundaries, of course. This is one run, run zero, so to say, and this is, a, and this is the start of run one, which will contain more elements. So that's visualized here. You see that here now the run has more elements. Okay, so how does the pseudocode look like? So assume we have capital M, that's the number of elements in main memory that we can use. We have R, that is the input queue, and R prime is the output queue. How does this work? So replacement selection takes this parameter, the input data to sort. And the first thing we do is, and that was also shown in the visual example, we fill main memory, we fill this buffer with M records. So whatever memory is available, it's filled with data. That is, of course, then the array you use here for both structures. So here you create this heap property that's a bulk loading of the heap structure that's also called a heapify operation in some textbooks. That is what happens here. We create the heap property on this buffer. We create an initially empty list and then we keep on removing elements from the heap. So while the heap is not empty, we remove elements. That happens here. We pop the top element that is the smallest element available on the heap. 
we remove it and write it to the output. That happens here. We append it to the output R prime. And then comes this if statement that looks at, okay, what is next in the input queue? Of course, we check here whether it's empty or not. So if it's empty, of course, we don't have to do anything. We can't draw any more elements. But if it's not empty, and that's the interesting case, we draw the next element. So this is shown here. You draw one element from input R. Here, that's what you do. You read one element. Of course, you don't read the page where the element sits on every time. Again, this is page-oriented reading, of course. Each page is only read once. That's an implementation detail we'll look at later on. On a high level, you read just one tuple. And that is assigned to this next pointer. And then comes this important check. That's a trick in replacement selection. You check whether this one is greater equal R prime. If it's equal, actually, you could directly output it to R prime. That is another minor optimization you can do. Then you have to do a higher number of comparisons. So I only do it with two cases here. But in any case, if it's greater equal R prime, then you can put it on the heap. Then it can be considered by the heap. That is what's done here. So we push it to the heap. The other case is strictly smaller than the last output R prime. In this case, we have to decrease the size of the heap by one element. That already happened here, actually, by popping it off the heap. Here, the heap decreased its size by one element. But now what we do is we do not push anything to the heap anymore, which means the size of the heap stays the same. However, we increase the size of the list. So we append it to the list. The size of the list is increased by one. So again, remember this property size of the heap plus size of the list, smaller equal m. And if you look through the code, you will see that this actually holds. So that's all. That's all you do. You just keep on popping elements off the heap, append them to R prime. You check whether you have more elements in the input. If that is the case, you read the next element and do this comparison with a previous element output to R prime. If that element that you currently have, if the next element you're looking at is greater equal R prime, just put it on the heap. If not, which means it's strictly smaller than the last element, then you append it to the list. So eventually in this algorithm, the heap will become empty. Why not heap is empty? Then what you do is you start all over. Basically at this point in time, so if you leave this loop here, this is the end of a run, as explained in the visual example. Then you bulk load the list into a heap again and start all over. You start the next run. That is what happens here. You initialize the list, of course. Again, this is all done in one array. This is one array in the implementation. And then you keep on looping while the heap is not empty. So of course here I bulk loaded it. It's not empty anymore. Then you go all over until the input is exhausted and then you're done with the last run. That is replacement selection. It's a very nice algorithm. It has some problems though. Even though sorting with the heap is optimal in the theoretical sense, we already talked about that when talking about heap sorts, the standard main memory heap sort is optimal. However, quick sort is faster. Why is that the case? Because quick sort has a better behavior in the storage hierarchy. So here we have a similar effect that the heap we're using for sorting is optimal. However, the heap is not so great with respect to cache misses. However, in the general case, one would expect if this is performed using disks, if the runs are really written out to a slower medium, then this replacement selection algorithm should be better than using quicksort in the first place. So it's a very nice algorithm. And I really recommend implementing this one when implementing external merge sort on a slow medium. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did.
or you look at our website infosys.uni-silent.de. See you there.